Chris, can you stand by for a minute? Um, I want to go to Jillian to you here because sure. one of the things that Chris referenced and that we heard in that news conference that just wrapped up was the charge here under a statute that references terrorism, but also other violent attacks against mass transportation systems. What do you make of that? So right now they're going to charge him as I honestly, I think that they're going to want to look at all of the footage, take all the witness statements, take all the complainant statements, assess the injuries to each person, and then they'll be able to draw what are the appropriate charges. Um, there's, he's only been arrested for about an hour and 10, an hour and 15 minutes. And it's still, we're waiting to see if the fed, the federal government's going to get involved, if they're going to prosecute him federally. The fact that they found him miles away, you know, Chris referenced the East Village, right, um, moving around pretty freely after the attack for this suspect. Is that something that you would imagine police would debrief on after this investigation? Absolutely. But we have to remember something. We're a city of 10 million people, so it is very easy to hide in plain sight here. And I think the most important thing that we should draw from this is in 30 hours from incident to arrest. That is very impressive. Law enforcement came out in full force. And most importantly, the community came out. They supported their law enforcement officers and they made those phone calls to the tipster line. Tell us more about the tipster line, right? Because you heard police and officials in New York give credit to the person who called this in that allowed police to go out and make this arrest. Yeah, and we use that. We've used it for years. It's, you know, you could remain anonymous if you want to. Um, some people would prefer that method instead of calling 911 for whatever reason they want to remain confidential. Um, in this case, it looks like someone did call Crime Stoppers. There was a reward in play and their location or their description of where the offender was led to the ultimate arrest. A pile of evidence, too, that police had collected from the scene, that law enforcement officials had recovered after the shooting happened, Jillian. I imagine that that is going to be something, and we know that it will be, the prosecutors will be using and looking at closely as this investigation continues. Yes, and I'm glad that law enforcement waited to call from person of interest to suspect until they had all the information. They didn't want to release anything prematurely. They didn't want to accuse someone that they weren't sure was the culprit in this case. So they waited until forensic evidence came back, prints came back. They got the trace on where that firearm came from. They were able to ascertain who was the person that rented the U-Haul. So they wanted to have as much concrete evidence as they could to move him from person of interest to suspect. And within a few hours, he was apprehended.